Hello, music lovers. Today we're diving into the fascinating story of how Diddy and Little Rod's partnership unfolded. This is a tale of trust, betrayal, and the pursuit of success in the ever-evolving music industry. Let's start with Diddy, a powerful industry figure who built his empire by nurturing talent. He met Little Rod, a promising artist with raw potential. Together they dreamed of creating music that would shake the world. In their agreement, Diddy promised to guide Little Rod's career and ensure his success in the industry. However, as time passed, things took an unexpected turn. Diddy, driven by his ambitions, saw a golden opportunity to grab all the glory for himself. He decided to deny Little Rod the publishing rights he deserved. This was a move that shocked Eve. Diddy offered him 29 or something like that, or he gave him 29. And he wanted 21, 21 more thousand with all his publishing. But, bruh, they leaked this on tape. They leaked this on the internet. Diddy was sitting on the couch with one of the, I don't know who he was. And the guy said to Diddy, Diddy said, I'm the boss of this shit. I'm the boss. And he said, yeah, you are the boss. He said, but Lil Rob and shit, we need to get all his publishing. That shit leaked on the internet. And I was like, oh, shit. And then all this stuff came out. But look how funny it is, bro. He filed this shit September of last year. Why are we just hearing about it now? You know why we just not hearing about it? Why is that? Because they was trying to figure out some way to pay him and sweep this, let it go out. But it wasn't going through. So now they made it public. They made it public because they probably in those that they try to say that Lil Rob lawyers number is not uh answering or they're not, you know, connecting with us. No, because they're not connecting with y'all because y'all numbers don't add up. The money that they looking for, y'all would y'all didn't want to give him that. So now we taking it to federal court to get the money that we feel like that we're entitled to. So now I'm looking at this whole thing. The kid was going to see a psychologist, a psychiatrist. He was trying to get help so he could show damages. He got uh uh P PTDS, PTSD. He got a lot of different things that he was saying in the, um, in the paperwork that he's psychologically traumatized from the shooting, from the sex workers, all that. So he suffered from PTSD. Uh, he suffered from uh, anxiety. He suffered from post-traumatic stress. Uh, yep. Yeah. This PTSD, right? And he said that uh, he has been financially and uh, psychologically fucked up from dealing with Diddy. Damn, man. I didn't know he was going through all that. But he also alleged in this lawsuit that, you know, Diddy, he got a whole lot of hidden cameras around his house. And he feels like Diddy is using all that footage for blackmail. Probably so. I could believe that. I could believe that. I believe it's a lot of rappers, a lot of music people, a lot of executives that could not say no. Cat Williams say, you just got to say no to Diddy. And it's a lot of people that couldn't say no. And they probably on tape. Because they couldn't say no. So you think it's possible that Diddy, he got footage of rappers in the stash just in case he got to use it for blackmail? It's a possibility. I, 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 I it's not far-fetched. If, if, if he was taping Cassie, 